Congratulations if you are watching this. It means now you are a full-fledged clinical student. Welcome to 500 level. Welcome to pediatrics. My name is Dr. Peter and I'm going to be discussing how you can, you know, go through and navigate through um, pediatrics in a very smooth way. I'm going to give you the insider's perspective towards um, um, pediatrics. Now, if you're in 500 level, you know, there is no pressure of graduation. So, and there, there is no pressure of fat and fam. So, we are in that, you know, cozy um, area where we are mature enough to take care of ourselves and still yet no pressure of graduation but we're in that comfortable spot and if you're in pediatrics I just want to let you know that pediatrics is one of the five P's of medical school so those P's will be physiology, pharmacology, pathology which you've done now pediatrics and then subsequently you will do psychiatry later on. It is famous as one of the five P's because it is tedious. It's tedious because pediatricians are the most passionate clinicians in the world over and they are it's that way because they are passionate they're emotionally charged and as well as they are very intellectually demanding so i want you to have that at the back of your mind as you walk into pediatrics they will always tell you that babies don't talk they only cry and if you don't do anything they die so they are very serious and they are going to you know extract and make sure they put in enough knowledge in your head before you're posting it over now but all that aside, how do you go about pediatrics? How do you go about pediatrics? P1, pediatrics when you're first posting, is an eight weeks program. Um, it's, mo it's both a clinical as well as, you'll be having clinical activities as well as having lectures. Now, off the bat, I counted the topics on the timetable. There are 160 topics in the pediatric curriculum for the undergraduate, um, for, for the undergraduate level. 160 topics is larger than physiology, it's larger than any other syllabus in medical school. 160 topics. So I want you just to be aware of that. And that includes seminars, lectures, and presentation and all that. So 160 of those is it means that in this eight weeks period, you actually have to study. Pediatricians, I told you, they will come for their lectures from 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. You'll be having lectures. You will likely not go home earlier than 4 p.m. any of those days. And let's not forget that there will be call hours. We start from 4 and then it doesn't end. So there will be um, extra activities too. Now, as a medical student, this is mostly personal. I, I suggest, and you should get this balance early in P1. In P1, you should balance your clinical activities and your, you know, academic activities as in a ratio of 70% to academic activities and 30% of your time and energy to clinical activities. If you put that in a week, that means at least you should take two calls a week. At least, at the very minimum, you should take two calls a week. And what it means to take two calls a week is after your lectures and all that, you go to the emergency pediatrics unit and then stay with the registrar and call where you learn and then see how you know things are done in pediatrics. So that's 70 30 is very important 70 30 because when you go for ward rounds and ground rounds and you know clinics you are going to be asked questions and the only way to know those questions is by studying so if you keep coming and you're an overcomer and you don't have stuff it's still not going to translate to you passing or knowing pediatrics and if you keep reading and you don't come at all it's easy clinicians know there's one phrase you have not been coming they know students who are textbook doctors so by the time you combine them in my opinion at the ratio of 70 to 30 at least in p1 you have a very smooth seal throughout and to learn clinical pediatrics to learn clinical pediatrics you need one of those handbooks maybe all round world round um, the guide or whatever handbook but i so i strongly suggest that you use that handbook that handbook tells you what you can't is not in the textbook like how to weigh a baby you have to wait for example the mother then weigh the mother and the baby and then subtract the weight those kind of things are not necessarily in textbook and you can only find that by you know going and then also reading those clinical handbooks like the guide or all world all around world round for him i'll just say the guide just for references but any of them is a good book to study now so sources of stuff for pediatrics your lectures are going to be full as i told you you might even have lectures up to 10 pm yes and i'm not going to mention names here but you, we know who will give you lectures up till 10 p.m at night so there will be lectures there will be lectures and pediatricians know they are they know their onions so you can come to lectures and you would even the best teachers we have in medical school and pediatrics so you are going to learn a lot both in terms of clinical comment as well as academic stuff you are going to learn a lot in pediatrics so sources of stuff lectures the materials from those lectures see lectures the material from those lectures by the time i put all my materials together for pediatrics it was bigger than 
essentials of nail scent what they call the small nail thing in volume it was larger than the nail thing so what are we talking about so you might really not even need a textbook just coming to class however if you want a textbook by all means essentials of pediatrics by nelson what they call the nelson is a very good um, source of stuff there's also a nigerian um, an african text a nigerian book in kangine um in fact uh, a former provost of ours professor um johnson has a very strong contribution in the book so those are the books that maybe when you quote you know they will say yeah you have been coming and then your seniors your registrars and your senior registrars and even your consultants will appreciate the fact that you've been studious so if by all means you need a textbook those two will be a good source of stuff now i found out in my pediatrics posting that osmosis is an online medical academy that has lectures for everything from cbd ibs all the way to m3 now these guys have such a beautiful collection for pediatrics that it covers all those viral diseases infectious diseases, every single part of pediatrics that that you can imagine and it's free on youtube so you can actually get them and study them it's fast it's fun and it's actually easy to remember they will give you codes give you mnemonics to be able to remember so osmosis will be another very interesting source of stuff for you to actually learn pediatrics you can watch 30 at a sitting and you might not feel they feel so exhausted so it's a very good source of stuff osmosis.com.org um, on youtube just check them and then you'll see how beautiful you know it is so that's one other good source of stuff for pediatrics now your p1 exam is just eight percent of your pre mb in pediatrics your logbook is ten percent of your pre mb what that means is that your p1 exam weighs less than your logbook the most important logbook in medical school is the pediatrics logbook ladies and gentlemen the most important logbook in medical school is your pediatrics logbook professor mokolu at one time analyzed logbooks in pediatrics for us and we discovered that and he discovered statistically speaking that students who have good logbook what they call polycythemic logbook never have problem passing the exam in pediatrics they never have problem so what i'm saying essentially is those who come pass in pediatrics so you just need to be and when things are statistically significant you cannot be let your logbook be anemic you should not let your logbook be anemic so come for clinical activities sign procedures sign presentation you'll be required to clerk and present 12 patients in pediatrics now 12 is quite a large number so the earlier you start the better and the more you clerk the better you become obviously your first three clerkings might actually be not nothing to write home about but it's important that it's a sign that is in the logbook and then you can you know significantly improve don't wait until you become a master of clerking before you make your first clerking if not you end up a pile of dead clay and at the end of the day you have four presentations and then your logbook will slash down then 10 marks 10 raw marks for from your pre mb will become you know shaky so sign procedures sign calls sign clinics sign clinical activities but all and all make sure your logbook is not pale now moving on to i think that would be enough for pediatrics one in pediatrics one the best investment you can make is to study and have some signatures in your logbook so that in p2 you might not have to read you will obviously have to read but the, what you have to read will not be so much because you already have some residual knowledge from what you've done in the past in p2 everything is going to going to be the same now in p2 i'll suggest you shift the ratio to 40 percent in academics and 40 percent in clinical activities and 60 percent in academics because now you are going to require a lot of clinical knowledge the reason why is because your end of posting for p2 will be mcqs the mcq will be about 300 mcqs in two hours actually there will be stem questions so it might not be 300 um, individual questions now the 300 since you have 300 questions there's enough question ground to cover the whole of the syllabus you will discover that any topic you've not read any material you've not read you will just when you get to those stem questions you just start seeing holes in your answer booklet because you've not studied them point i'm trying to make is the exam is very comprehensive when it comes to the mcq part of pediatrics the other part of the exam in the end of posting for p2 is the traditional exam there's another video on traditional exams and examinations and you know clerking sessions you should watch that um when you have the time but now for your end of posting in pediatrics you will have to crack and present your patient to the consultant actually to like three consultants and then you discuss management options with them as well as you know answer some questions and then 
um, do a few other things. So the end of posting exam is actually going to be a traditional exam. A traditional exam because it will be you simulating what you're going to do in real life when you become a doctor. So that's what it means by traditional exam. Because of that, your clinical clerkship, your the way you you know examine and all those things must be in very very good shape. By now, I'm sure you have a stethoscope. By now, you know you know the simple rules when you are going for traditional exams. Your hair must not be conspicuous. It's better to wear the conservative colors of gray, white, blue, you know, brown and navy blue instead of orange, purple, um, lilac and fuchsia. It's better to wear those conservative conservative colors. Your hair must be you know well well. Well, you cannot be examining the abdomen of a neonate and your fingers, you know, are so long. The clinicians will frown at that. And traditional exams are exams where your consultant can walk out on you and then you have a vector failure. So your comportment will be a very significant contribution to your end of posting in P2 when it comes to the traditional part of the exam. I just want you to have that at the back of your mind. Of course, your clinical tools like your pen touch, your stet, your ruler, your tape measure, your whisk for cutting wool, um, um, a toothpick for eliciting, for um, checking for pain sensation, all those you should have them when the time comes for pediatrics exam. There will be another video on maybe, there might be another video on how you go about your MP and then there will be another video for clinical acumen, you know, examination and stuff like that so that you have a very smooth um, um, clinical um, skill by the bedside, very good bedside manners that will, you know, make your um, your teachers smile at you and then, you know, have a very good um, step. I hope this is a comprehensive grasp of this gives you a comprehensive grasp of pediatrics so that as you move into the posting you can know what to do what to expect and how to actually deliver them in the exam have a wonderful posting and remember